Hi, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today it's another cloudy, drizzly summer day here. And I'm looking at a couple of different pens of grow outs that I have going on. I kept their doors shut so I could go in and get a good look before I turned them loose to their runs. I've got another pen over here that I'll be looking at. But first, I want to tell you what's going on and what my plan is and where I'm at for this season. So, I have been hatching out of four different pens lately. And I'm seeing some consistently small eggs. Let me grab two of them. They're going to be a little dirty because it's been muddy and gross here. But I've got these two eggs. This one's relatively dark. This one has really good color for the American breast variety. But both of these are small. And I know that these birds from the first two pens, they have been laying consistently ever since last February and March. So by now their egg size should absolutely have come up to that large size. They should be at 60 grams or a little more. So I haven't been hatching those eggs. I've been using them for breakfast, but I've got a pretty healthy crop of pellets coming in behind them and I'm going to have to have a place to put them. So not only do I need to go through the adults and figure out who's not going to be here next year, go ahead and pair those birds with dumplings and then do some math on the pen space I have available and what my goals are for next season. When I hatched some of those smaller eggs, the results weren't great. They didn't turn out into the bigger birds that I'm used to and they weren't growing as well and they weren't getting as fleshy. So that confirmed what I was thinking about those smaller eggs. This pen here only has a trio and his fertility has been spotty. And he only has two females. One of the females, she hasn't laid in quite a while. The other one has been doing a great egg. So I'll probably pull her out and put her in a different pen. And call out the other two in this pen. The back pen, they've been really productive. That's a trio. And that guy is keeping up great. So I'm probably going to give him two more females. Probably the spare out of here. Who's been laying really great. She just needs a better male who's better at fertilizing. So that'll empty this pen. These are the youngest birds. They were October hatch from last season. I'm not crazy about what the male has been thrown forward. And there's probably at least three to four females of the seven that can come out of there based on their rate of lay and the kind of eggs that they're laying. Because when you're doing dual purpose, it's a lot to pay attention to. Not only is it the growth rate and the meat and the fleshing, but it's also the rate of lay, the size of eggs. And then for the breed, it's the color of eggs. That matters too. Pen number two, these have been my rock star birds. I've been hatching the most from them and they've really been throwing some pretty good results. But I think there's a female or two in here that can come out, but this boy... He is the biggest and best grower from last season, and his fertility has been 95% or better. This guy gets to go on to next season, but he's going to get the same females. He has a comb that I'm not crazy about and a tail that's a little bit thin. So I'm not going to breed him to daughters because that's going to take his faults and that's going to exaggerate them, and I don't want to see more of it. I actually want to see improvement. So I'll just refine the females that he has from that same hatch group, but he's not going to get to line breed through subsequent generations. That would be a mistake because I don't want what his faults are to occur at a higher rate of frequency, if that makes sense. If you're going to breed back to a bird, that bird really needs to be a rock star. And he's got some stuff about him that I don't want set into the line. So as long as I have females that are his generation or older, I'll do it that way. But I'm not going to give him any young stock. 
So he'll get condensed, but he will not get refreshed. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so if I go into pen one here, I added the two Chantecler pellets, these two here, to grow with this group because they're comparable ages. We have this boy here acting like he's trying to be in charge. And there's a second male there. And there's 10 American breast pullets. And I'm looking at who can come out so that I can condense this pen in quantity and then shift them over as I make space that direction. So then I can come back and refill this pen. I want to get down to the best quad of the birds in here. If you look, the leg color between these two girls, it's different. And when leg color is one of the things I've been focus focusing on this season, and that female on the back right has better leg color. A hands-on evaluation will let me know if her wing doing that is from feather growth and molting or if she's going to have a wing quality issue. This bird would be a call for pale legs and the wing if that wing proves to be naturally like that. We'll find out when I actually get hands on. That's the leg color we're going for. That or maybe a little darker. You want the bluest blue that blue can be. Definitely not the Chanticleer yellow. <laughs> or any other color. So the two boys that are in here, they were the best of the batch. This hatch batch was larger. There were about 25 birds and I've got it down 10 pullets and two males. This guy's got a wavy comb. But I like his body and his growth rate and his flushing. How he ultimately feathers in, we'll find out right now. His tail is on the thin side, but with their age, I think these guys are right at 14 weeks. He's still growing in. What do you think, birds? Do you want to get hands on today? They never say yes. <laughs> but the feel is more important than what they look like. This male doesn't look to be as deep in the chest as that male is. That guy also seems to have a thicker tail coming in. I'd call this guy a little bit narrow. I don't know. It's hard when you're trying to use your eyeballs. It works a lot better when you're using your hands. I at least want to get through this pen today. The humidity is high today and it's making the wood of the doors a little sticky. This is a pretty promising group as well. 10 birds total. I thought I had put two males in here with eight pellets, but it looks like I've got a slow developing male who tricked his way in here. Those birds I always, always, always label as a call, no matter what. Because the late blooming thing, sneaking in later, I don't want to encourage that in the flock. So he's for sure coming out. <laughs> And then we'll have to do the hands-on evaluation 
for the rest of them. This one I liked because he had really strong flushing. But if you notice his comb, he has like four spikes on that. As well as a little wave to it. But I can use his lack of spikes to go with perfectly reasonable females that have too many comb spikes. And do a little bit of compensation mating with an eye on combs. But I only worry about that if the body's good. The structure, the fleshing, the growth rate, all of that needs to be there before you even start thinking about the little trivial traits. These guys, earlier on, they all passed the field test. So, as they come of age and their traits start getting known for the little details, I can start sorting them off of that. But you have to grow them in order to figure out what's going on. These guys, these are all males, unless I find an overachieving pullet in there. But I've identified them as calls if they are male. There's three different age groups in here. I'm going to pull the bigger ones out, put them over in rooster coop. Like that guy. You're ready. Beyond ready. A lot of them are in here for paler than desired leg color. Which is something you can't taste. <laughs> If there's still time today, I've got to get into this pen. And this is a group of birds that I sorted by leg color early, early on. I sorted them down when they were three weeks old by who had the darkest feet. And it looks to be a female heavy group. So I'm still seeing the thing where I get better leg color from the female more often than I do from the males. But four boys in here is too many for the number of females, so I'll go through them, do another hands-on field test, and see if I can eliminate two boys to move over to the male grow-out area. <laughs> Just to prevent drama later on it's a nice looking group of birds though for their age these guys are like nine weeks old I like the way they're looking and since lake color has always been on my agenda I've sorted another several batches by the early expression of leg color. So once I free up some more pen space, this is a hatch batch sorted for leg color. And over there I did the same thing, sorted for leg color. It's been the thorn in my side since I got going in this variety. <laughs> So the leg color, I mean, it's trivial and it doesn't have flavor, but it's an important breed trait. So if you're going to be breeding for the breed standard, you got to watch that stuff. First and foremost, the feel test. I bet that one's going to feel better than the other male, if I was going to guess. But that's where I'm at. Getting heavy into sort season and already planning for next season. If you wait until next season to plan for next season, you might make some mistakes if you're rushing it. I like to have it all finalized by November. And then I like to start hatching whenever the birds cooperate, really. January, February, March. That way I have birds old enough to go on to pasture as soon as that grass starts popping off in growth. So I'm going to make some space. I'm going to get myself up to sort through these birds and then the videos that go along with it. In terms of what we find, what we see, 
what we like and what we don't like. Because it's amazing what a little bit of breeding work will do. The only reason this flock is as productive and as fast growing and as correct as they are right now is because of all the other seasons leading up to this season where I put this amount of work and thought into it. And it never stops. You never reach a point where you can quit. <laughs> and I don't mind it. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Hopefully you do too once you know what you're aiming for and what your flock goals are. So feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll try to fill you in on, on as many details as I can and the reasons for those details. Some more on this later.